Hi, I'm Eric Johnson here at the Owen Graduate School of Management, and I'm here today with Peter Smith. Peter is a regional vice president, senior vice president for Nissan Americas, and in that role in the corporate planning office. And he's here today uh, speaking on campus, and uh, well, welcome, Peter. Thank you, I'm super excited to be here, Eric. Thank you for hosting. Nissan is such an amazing company, has been going through a transformation that you guys call Nissan Next, a four-year program to really transform the company. You're about halfway through. Um, what have you learned and where do you see the company going in the next two years? No, super appreciate the, the question, Eric. And it's been a really exciting time at Nissan. As you outlined, you know, we're looking at transforming the business and that comes from transforming the product. So change the product, change the business and change the culture. It's really an exciting time in our industry. I mean, you've probably seen the great shift toward electrification, toward connectivity, toward software-driven vehicles. And so with that, at Nissan, we said we also need a new plan of how we're going to transition to the, to the future. And so the first step of that plan has been launching all new products. And you've probably seen the all new Rogue, the all new Pathfinder, yeah. the all new Sentra, yeah. the all new Frontier <laughs> on the road. And all are a symbol of the transformation of uh, Nissan Next. And all are delighting customers and selling uh, extremely well. So we're very, it's, it's been a very good first step in the transformation of the company through the products. And on top of that, we also are transitioning into electrification and I'll talk about that uh, in a bit, but also connectivity and what that means for the customer experience in bringing you know, their full life into the vehicle, not just horsepower sure. and exciting sure. driving dynamics anymore, but how do we facilitate the lives of our customers and bring delight to them from many different aspects uh, in the customer, in the, in the, in the, in the vehicle. And it's also about transforming the, uh, the purchasing experience. And we've launched Nissan at Home, which is an online experience where customers can configure and order vehicles uh, directly online. So, uh, of course, delivery is at the dealership, sure. but you don't have to go directly to the dealership to get your car anymore. You can do it just from the comfort of your own home. That's neat. And so, you know, Nissan Next is an exciting first step. We're two years into the four-year plan. We're hitting our KPIs. We just made an announcement uh, uh, a month ago, um, outlining that we are in, in, on our targets. We're meeting our KPIs, and it's, it's been a great journey and an exciting first step into you know, really the transformation of Nissan and building ourselves, you know, positioning ourselves in a, in a great place uh, for the future. Well, you mentioned EVs, and uh, of course there's so much excitement in the industry around EVs right now, but Nissan was really an early player in the EV space with LEAF and uh, you know, really coming in as an affordable entry-level vehicle. Uh, how do you see the market evolving for EVs and, and where will Nissan position itself? No, absolutely, and appreciate the question. And you're right, we launched the LEAF, the first electric vehicle uh, here in the U.S. Uh, in 2011. So like ancient times. Yeah, now, right? some may say that you know we were too early. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, we saw electrification before others did. And so we, w we wanted to get into it and be a leader in battery electrification uh, early on. And throughout that journey of first launching the LEAF, we have over 8 billion miles traveled on fully electric uh, vehicles. Mm -hmm. And with that, we know a lot about electric vehicles. And you're going to see in the coming months, Eric, as you outlined, that uh, Nissan itself will launch a full lineup, all shapes and sizes of uh, fully electrified vehicles, starting with the Nissan Aria that will launch in the coming weeks here mm -hmm. and will really be a symbol of the technology prowess of Nissan. 100% electric, large, vast amounts of range, great connectivity, autonomous uh, features, and then you know, it's, it's really a symbol of what we can do. And so Nissan fully aims to be a leader uh, in electrification. And it's also an, in, an interesting inflection point in the US where you know, today about 3% of cars are fully electric. Whereas what we see and what external forecasters see by 2030 is 40% of our market wow. will be electrified. Mm. And so our whole lineup will look very different um, as we move forward. And so you're going to see a measured launch uh, of fully electrified vehicles. We just announced a $500 million investment in our factory in Canton, Mississippi. We'll be launching uh, two vehicles uh, out of there. And it's just mm. the start of an exciting electric future um, that Nissan uh, has in our plans. And we fully anticipate to win. And we, we aim to be uh, the leader among Asian uh, OEMs in fully electrified vehicles. That's great. It's an exciting journey. It's yeah. an exciting time in our industry yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. And then more pressing, you know, at the, at the current moment, we have a lot of discussions in your industry and many others about supply chain challenges and the impact that inflation is having uh, as it trickles its way towards the consumer. Um, how are you guys navigating that and thinking about availability and affordability? Absolutely. And it's really an exciting time in management and crisis management. Yeah, I and bet. What an amazing uh, couple of years it's been yeah. with COVID and then the fallout of COVID, right. and as you outlined. Yeah. You know, we're now in year two of supply chain issues. Um, and it's ranging everything from chips all the way through raw materials, as, as you're familiar with. And so, you know, at Nissan, it's really about dynamicism and agile management and ensuring that as we have new challenges come, like chip shortages, that we're able to pivot and you know, work with our suppliers, work with our dealers, um, work with, uh, with our teams to ensure that we are able to procure uh, those chips and other uh, raw materials, but then also feed our production lines um, because our factories also need um, throughput mm -hmm. and ensuring that our employees are engaged and, and motivated and able to build the vehicles that they love building. And so I would say it's been a very interesting time, <laughs> a new challenge for management skills, but at the same time, a great opportunity where you know, we've learned how to uh, pivot as a giant organization. And at the same time, you know, with that, you know, how to manage pricing in this uh, fluctuating market where you know, we wanna make customers happy. So ensuring that we aren't you know, uh, raising prices to you know, the unattainable levels but ensuring we're in line with competition, that we're in line with customers' pocketbooks um, to ensure that mobility is available to all uh, here in the U.S. Well, you know, one of the things I really love about my role here is I get to learn from lots of uh, leaders like yourself, and you've had really an amazing journey spending uh, a good bit of your professional career in Korea and Japan um, and uh, now back in, in the U.S. And I wonder if you could share a leadership lesson. No, absolutely, and I appreciate it. And I'm excited to learn uh, from you and your students today uh, during my visit here to Vanderbilt. But for me, you know, leadership is a, it's a constant learning journey. And so I really make it a goal to learn something new every day. And if there's one thing I've found throughout my career, it's that everyone has something to teach you. And, and so I've, I've tried to be very receptive uh, to learning. And through, you know, through learning from others, you also gain a respect and appreciation for them that then builds teamwork that then builds cohesion, that uh, you know, it should carry through throughout the teams and throughout the organization. And as you outlined, I've spent uh, 20 years uh, in Asia and different countries um, as well, but you know, throughout that experience, you're forced to learn mm -hmm. every day because it's different than uh, what you grew up with. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's those lessons that I've learned throughout living in these different areas that I think have really helped me you know, as a person, as a, as a leader, and as a team player of how we need to respect each other's differences, how there's beauty and, and uh, great value and diversity, and how different opinions and different positions can really spur innovation and uh, you know, dynamicism in the team. And so you know, if there's one thing that I've learned throughout my career, Eric, it's that you know, as a leader, I need to be humble and I need to be learning. And it's really knowledge that is shared you know, throughout the teams, which is knowledge multiplied. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of organizations is that we can share this knowledge and multiply knowledge across, uh, across all in it. Well, certainly that global experience uh, had a huge impact for you. Is that something you recommend to, to, to students coming out of universities to think about how they can position themselves outside the U.S.? No, absolutely. And I'll be honest with you, as a, as a kid growing up in Southern California, I never even dreamed mm -hmm. about uh, living abroad. I just wanted to surf uh, <laughs> full time. But no, it, it, an opportunity rose. And, you know, per your point, it was just stepping through the door and taking that opportunity. And it led to an incredible journey. And so per your point, I would absolutely recommend it mm -hmm. because really what it does for your perspective, what it does for your, your global vision is incredible. And when you meet people from other cultures and you live with them, it really changes, again, as, as mentioned, your leadership style, but also you as a person. And the beauty that you can take you know, from other countries, from other business practices and bring them back in has really been life edifying and life changing. So I absolutely recommend it. It takes a bit of courage, <laughs> um, but it's fully worth uh, the investment uh, and, and time. Well, Peter, thanks so much for spending the day with us at Vanderbilt. It's my pleasure. I'm delighted to be here.